Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Royals Rundown podcast presented by Royals Review. I am Jake Milham, joined as always by Jeremy Greco. Jeremy, it is Sunday, it is hot, and it is starting to feel like the precursor of summer here. I don't know about you. Yeah, it got up in the 80s yesterday, which uh, is considerably warmer than I like it to be. <laughs> but um, we'll uh, we'll get through this somehow with lots of yes, air conditioning, we will. mostly. Yeah, my uh, my window units are about to be working some some overtime here this time next month. <laughs> Oh, but before we get into the podcast episode today, please go make sure to check out RoyalsReview.com. You can follow Royals Review on X and on Facebook at the same name. And if you want to support the podcast further, you can follow us on X and on TikTok at Royal Rundown Pod. So coming up in today's episode, we're going to do an overall temperature check of how we're feeling about the Kansas City Royals one month into the season. Plus, we got to talk about Salvador Perez, who has been absolutely electric at the plate. And lastly, a Kansas City Royals pitching prospect is getting the call for a Monday start against the Toronto Blue Jays. So, Jeremy, let's go and set the table for how these 2023 Royals are doing right now. And as we sit today, they are... Which I numbers are hard. They are 17 and 11. I was about to say 18 and 11, but it doesn't look like they're going to be 18 and 11 after uh, after this game. We're recording in the top of the seventh right now, so maybe the Royals have a have a rally left in them. But they sit at 17 and 11 right now, a point a point six zero seven win loss percentage. Okay, that's that's really good. It's it's pretty dang good. That'll that'll get you 100 wins, close to it yeah. anyway. Yep, that's what I did. I did the math, and like right now they're on a 98 game win pace. That would win the division. Yeah, I would. I would certainly hope so. The scary part is though that all their expected numbers expect them to actually be doing better, which yeah. is amazing. Um, I how are how are you feeling about it? And summarizing like three sentences. I mean, I'm disappointed that it looks like they're going to lose this this Detroit series. I really thought that they should easily win two out of three and have a chance at a sweep. Um, but the pitching kind of faltered again in the offense. Other than, I mean, the explosion in the eighth inning Friday afternoon has been a little bit lackluster. They don't have a home run this entire series. Which is crazy. And the only extra base hit they had. Um, Friday was Witt's triple, and I think the only extra base hit they had yesterday was Salvi's double. So mm. uh, it's hard to win games if you don't get any extra base hits. It really is. It really is. And what I mean, we started off the game with an extra base hit today with Michael Garcia getting that double, and I I truly thought, hey, they're going to get to Scoobal early, and we're we're looking good right now. He's currently still in the game. And Royals have runners on the corner, so let's see let's see what happens there. You know, they uh, they scored that run before I got around to turning the game on today, <laughs> and so I've turned it off so that we can have this recording. So maybe it's my fault. May- maybe so. Maybe just just keep the just keep the television set off ah, for right now, I, Jeremy. You'll have to let me know what's going on. I've got nothing. <laughs> Flying blind here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we have Garrett Hampson at the plate. <laughs> Well, uh, I should obviously turn it back on to witness that majesty, <laughs> which this is this is where I'm going to get into my where how I'm feeling about the Royals right now. It is the the pitching to start off the year was absolutely elite shutdown right now. It has regressed a little bit to the mean, but it's still it's still easily a top seven pitching staff right now. If you look at the results, okay, not perfect but definitely one for a winning ball club. The lineup is where a lot of the issues lie. And it's it is unfortunate, but that's the truth. And a lot of my ire and a lot of my frustration falls on these guys that are getting a lot of play due to, you know, their versatility and the matchups and things like that. Garrett Hampson, why why does he already have 21 games played this year like that's well, okay how many starts does he have though <sighs> okay you because that's gonna there. be the answer to your question you got me there because he's he's pinch running and he's defensive replacement which are the things that he is useful for 
okay, very true. But even even when he's getting the start, right? It's he's a black hole at the bottom of the lineup. So here's he, here's my ahead. question for you. I'm just gonna uh, interrupt you. Here's my question yeah. for you. Yeah, he's a black hole at the bottom of the lineup. Who who's he replacing? That's that's gonna be better because he he starts against lefties, right? So they're yeah. pulling in Jay Melendez, who's cold as ice. They're pulling Michael Massey, who is a lefty who struggled against lefties in his career. Um, they're pulling Kyle Isbell, who's not hitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, you're not downgrading that much by putting Garrett Hampson out there. I'm not. This is not necessarily a defense of starting Garrett Hampson, but it's. Mm, I mean, look at this team. Well, and like that's, but that's where some of the frustration lies. Like, I, I don't think it's completely unrealistic for the Royals to have at least started evaluating outside options. Because if you look at Garrett Hampson, there isn't a plug-and-play replacement for him on the 40-man roster. There, there really isn't. You have, you have guys who could ride the bench like, you know, Drew Waters or Nick Prado, but Garrett, they can't play the infield like Hampson can. Um... I, I feel like the Royals can easily replace his speed. I get it's a it's a great tool, but you have Diron Blanco for that reason, and I'm a Diron Blanco homer, and I want him. Today was his first start in center field. Like I I personally think that's egregious at this point. Um, but he's another guy like you talked about. He's pinch running a lot. He's a defensive substitution a lot. He's just not getting a ton of play at the plate. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say much more egregious to me is that uh, Adam Frazier is getting his third start at designated hitter. Uh, They mentioned on the broadcast he started a designated hitter 15 times in his career, three times in the first month of this season. Um, And and this is where I go back to. And I know your your cowboy friend called in. uh, I guess it was Friday. Uh, complaining uh, about our complaints about, about Adam Frazier. But this is where I continue to insist, what role does he have on this roster? Because Nick Lofton would make a lot more sense playing in this game. Yep. Um, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I, uh, I'm i glad he robbed that home run Friday. That was awesome. I, I don't know if they win the game without that because it changes everything about how the, the Tigers use their bullpen probably. Probably so, uh, but I, I want I want rosters that make sense. Hunter yeah. Renfro uh, doesn't make sense. He never made sense. No, no. Adam and Frazier doesn't make sense. The, and this is where I why I keep defending. And maybe I should just give up on it. Is why I keep defending Garrett Hampson. Is he makes sense on this roster? Is he having a lot of success? No, but at least his role makes sense like i i can see why you want a pinch runner who can who has a lot of positional versatility on your bench yeah. that makes a lot of sense to me freddie for not hitting either but you need a backup catcher makes a lot of yeah. sense to me hunter renfro and 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 adam frazier do not make sense to me especially i mean if they'd signed hunter renfro they gave him you know one million one year four and a half like they did frazier i'd say okay right-handed outfield bat that makes sense but they gave him the second year if he sucks. And guess what? He <laughs> sucks. He, sucks. <laughs> he re- like it's, it's pretty bad. There's not this isn't something a story that you could save with expected stats or oh he's hitting the ball hard, things like that. No, it is up and down the board. Things are bad for Hunter Renfro at the plate. And I you give I will give him a little bit of credit. The arm strength has shown up a couple of times in games. Um, he hasn't been a complete fielding liability out there in right field, but that's not, he's never going to be an above average defender out in right field. So why not at least get a bat in the lineup in that spot? And and it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise that he's not hitting. He didn't hit last year. He got cut from two teams because he wasn't hitting last year. Yeah. And again, if the Royals think he can bounce back, they think they can identify some flaw in his swing and they can help him. Fine. Give him a one year flyer deal. Why did you give him a second year that, that's guaranteed if he sucks? I don't know. I it's it's still a head scratcher and his performance so far proves why it was a head scratcher. All right. That's there's no there's no way to slice it. Um, I do. I do want to pose this to you, Jeremy, though. So this time last year's when we were looking at 
okay, how long is Jackie Bradley Jr. going to be on the roster? How long is Fran Mill Ray is going to be on the roster? And unfortunately, both of them were easy to get rid of because they, they were on minor league deals. They were on low money deals. How, how much leash do you think the Royals are giving Renfro? Because he, he can't keep this pace. Well, the problem with Renfro is who do you replace him with? I, I just named off a couple of folks. I think Drew Waters has the arm strength out there, and he is a switch hitter. He I, has you, more you think versatility. think he's going to hit better? I, I think he's going to hit better than a 486 OPS. I do. All right. Well, then, um, you know, one thing we have seen uh, over the last couple of weeks is that um, Hunter Renfro or Hunter Renfro has been playing a lot less. I, I yeah. think he's only started four out of the last seven games. Um and, and he got the start today because there was a lefty on the mound. That That's the other problem. That's, the, I guess, the biggest problem with, okay, Drew Waters is that Drew Waters is not very good against lefties. So even though he's a switch hitter, you're really just adding another left-handed outfield bat. Um, so uh, that, that's a little tricky. But again, if Renfro's not hitting the lefties either, what does it matter? Um, yeah. And Waters is probably better defensively. He's faster. So I, I I don't hate that. I wish Tyler Gentry was was kind of pushing, um, you know, if, if he was playing well, I think the decision would be a lot easier for the Royals to say, yeah, we don't we don't want to keep doing this. Yeah, but un- unfortunately, that's that's not the case right now. Um, and we we talked a little bit about Drew Waters on the last episode, so I'm not going to I'm not going to beat that dead horse. But yeah, this Hunter Renfro's bounced around the league for a reason like it's not like just last year was his first time being a journeyman all right it's it's been a career thing for him um so i'm i'm trying to think of replacements i have some replacements for we don't really we don't really have any for for hampson unfortunately nope because we traded Uh, some on taylor yeah um what about so i'd Everyone loves Logan Porter. Yeah, I, I will say that. What what if the Royals wanted to send down Freddie for mean, get some everyday I mean, you play have to clear up a forty man spot and, and magical who, injuries, huh? Magical injuries, mysterious well, ones. I mean, that. yeah, I guess you could do that. But Logan Porter is what twenty nine now. Yeah, he, he's, he's not, not a, a real solution. prospect. No. And so to cut someone from the 40 man, you're reducing your versatility to put someone on the roster that you don't honestly <laughs> believe is going to be a significant upgrade. That's true. And a position that starts like twice a week. Yeah, fair. All right. Think about this. Austin Nola is still on the 40 man roster. OK, would you I mean, would you at least entertain a one for one swap Porter for Nola? What's Nola doing in Omaha? I haven't looked. I don't think not he's a, any not better. a dang thing. Yeah. Last, so. last I looked, he only he only had four plate appearances. Um, he might be hurt then. Injured. Yeah. So no, I probably don't. I probably don't swap Freddie for being for the guy who's hurt. Probably, well, probably don't do that. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about the forty man spot. I'm talking about swapping Nola and Border. Oh well, you can't just swap them. If you do that, uh, Nola's gone. So you've lost your veteran backup, which the Royals apparently value. Apparently so. This this team's depth is trepidatious. Yeah, I, this was this was a concern heading into the season. Um, it's been kind of allayed by the fact that they haven't had a lot of injuries and that guys have generally played well enough. Um, yeah. But right now, Michael Garcia and Salvador Perez are the only ones who seem to be able to get hits. Yeah. Um, everybody else has kind of gone ice cold. So it's it's a little frustrating. And that's that was probably always going to be the thing with this team is that this lineup is going to be a little. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Top heavy. Huh? Top heavy. Streaky. Uh, Streaky. There we go. There's there's flashes in there. MJ Melendez will hit the tar out of the ball for a couple of weeks, you know, um, 
uh, Michael Garcia will hit the ball for a couple of weeks. The, the biggest surprise, honestly, has been Salvador Perez hasn't stopped hitting at all. He's no. one of the best hitters in the sport right now. Yeah. And every time I give up on Salvador Perez, because I thought he was done before the season, I'm like, trade him for anything you can get for him. He is done. We don't need him clogging up the roster. And of course, he's been by far the best hitter on this team. And and like he's been not just because like everybody else is awful, but because he's been very, very good. He, he's been I that doesn't even begin to put it. He currently leads the league in RBIs with with 26 and his. So I'm looking at some of his relative stats. And the one I like best is the OPS plus. It puts it on that 100 scale. <laughs> right. His OPS right now is sitting at 187. All right. Which that is for, you know, for relative purposes, his 2021 year where he set or tied the franchise record with home runs and with 48. His OPS plus that year was 128. OK, so Salvi is on a not a red hot, but a nuclear streak right now. He and, is on a and we're getting we're getting close to where it's not a small sample size anymore. No, that is Though, that date is in, is approaching quickly. I do I do want to say that he can't keep this up. He just can't. No. He cannot keep it up. I just want everyone to know that I believe Salvador Perez cannot keep this up. I'm giving <laughs> up on him. So wow. We're clear. Yeah. Well, so I, I I will say this. It is hard to believe in Salvi after we just saw this just last year. All right, he had that great May. Absolutely stellar May, setting franchise records, leading MLB, all these things. And then the rest of the season, nothing like, you know, what else he had last year? What? A thumb injury that he came back way too fast from. Yeah. And he came back from a groin injury this year way too fast from. Well, that didn't seem to slow him down. The thumb injury did seem to slow him down. That's true. That is true. I thought it was interesting to hear. Um. Mac Trero talk about, you know, deciding when and where Salvi plays um, in the in Sunday's pregame show with or on the uh, on the 610 broadcast. Um, it sounds like they are they're very high on him at first base. Like that seems like a, a long term thing, not just a, a short term solution, um, which hopefully that I mean, Hopefully that's the case. I think if they had like a catcher emerge that could take more of a workload from him behind the plate, then we would see that. Um, Probably because then you could I mean, you could DH, you could flip him and, and Vinny around first base DH and be fine. Um, yeah. And, and Velasquez, if he was hitting, could be playing in the outfield instead of Renfro. <laughs> That is true. There's it's it's amazing how uh, the trickle down effect in baseball just affects the rest of the lineup. That's that's always been the case. It's nothing new. But when you see it so blatantly, that's when it's uh, interesting. Yeah, because even if even if Freddie was doing what he was doing last year, which is still above replacement level catcher, solid behind the plate, not a complete liability at, at the plate, but he's still going to, you know, bat in the bottom half of the order. If he was doing that, I think we would see more Salvia at first base. Uh, especially with Renfro and Velasquez, both cold and and Matt Quattro proving quite willing to bench guys, move guys around in the lineup, whatever it took takes to get the best bats in there. Mm hmm. And I do. They're they're going to have to make some decisions. Soon, I'm not saying like next week, tomorrow. I'm talking like in the next month, mm -hmm. right? Where there, we we can't keep this current pace with Hunter Renfro. We can't be a, a winning team and have this guy on our roster taking up plate appearances every week. Well, and that's where I come back with somebody's got to show that they're ready to replace him. Right. As soon as someone shows that, I think that they will. Uh, this JJ Piccolo and Matt Quattrero do not seem like they're married to guys the same way that Ned Yost, Mike Matheny and Dayton Moore were. Um, so they, I, it's going to be hard, you know, maybe to cut Renfro, but they cut Hunter Dozier when he had more money left on his deal. Similar yeah. amount of time. So like sometimes you just got to say, yep, that was a mistake and eat it and move on. Well, it is. Listen, it ain't my money. I'm just I'm just here talking about it. 
So we we already kind of brushed over over Salvador Perez, but I do want to ask you this this question. This current pace he's he's on. Um, do you think like this is going to buy him another year? Like let's let's say he continues this pace until end of June, and even if he cools off down the stretch, it's still an amazing season from him overall. I was with you. I was pretty out on Salvador Perez beyond 2024. It's like, okay, like now if we have another down year, we have to look at moving on. Um, do you, but do you think stuff like this is only going to buy him more time? In oh, Kansas yeah. City? I mean, he's still under contract for next year. Um, they have a club option for 26. So a, a lot of whether they'll pick that up depends on what he does next year. But I, I mean, he's he's on pace for a career year and he's also improved defensively behind the plate and at first base. He has been a positive at both positions by the by the metrics and by the eye test yeah. um, where whereas he had been a negative for a very long time behind the plate. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's one point six FWAR. His career high is 3.2 back in 2013. Whew. He's already halfway there, and we're not quite a month into the season. Yeah, we are. He, it's he's he's on MVP pace. Like let's let, yeah. let's be real. Yeah, at, at very least. I mean, he's he's got an OPS over a thousand. Do you yep. know how many guys in MLB even this at this point in the year have an OPS over a thousand? How many? Let me let me pull it up because <laughs> I I didn't quite get the buttons clicked in time. To Gosh, answer that, it, your, your computer's running slower than my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, come on. Where did you put the OPS? Oh, geez. It's hiding which, from me. Which here, here's a random thing. The Apparently, the league OPS is like the lowest it's ever been in the live ball era right now. Well, there have been a lot of team, like every team we face, it feels like they're like, oh, yeah, they're pitching really good. Um, so that doesn't super surprise me. I'm kind of like, yeah, that checks out because, I, I mean, if if all the pitchers are doing well, then the, the hitters must not be. Yeah. Perez's um, 1.01 OPS ranks seventh in the league, and he is one of eight batters, both AL and NL, with an OPS over 1,000. Yep. He's behind... Mookie Betts, uh, O'Neal in Boston. I cannot remember his first name. I think it's Tyler. Tyler O'Neal, Marcelo Zuna, Shohei Otani, Alec Bohm, Juan Soto, and he's just ahead of Gunnar Henderson. Yep. Um, pretty pretty good company to be it in. Is. That is that, that is very good company. I I would say. None of those guys are that old except Ozuna. I think. Yeah, o- Ozuna is getting up there. Hey, you you might want to turn on the. Uh, Turn on the game if you can. Will Klein just trot it on. This will oh. be his MLB debut. Awesome. So that's uh good for that's I'm cool. so glad for him. I, like, I I'm bummed too. for Alec Marsh, but I'm glad for, for Will Klein finally getting his debut. Well and we'll we'll talk about the we'll talk about the Bolin um call up here in a little bit. But I was I was really worried like that we hadn't seen him. Since he was promoted, I was like, man, they're they're just going to have him as an emergency option, aren't they? But here he is. He's in a low leverage situation. The Royals are down three in the bottom of the eighth. They're probably not coming back from this. And here he is, 24 years old, making his MLB debut. So congratulations to the fireballer is what I would call him, Will Klein. He's got that big old red beard, too. Unfortunately, he's probably about to get demoted. Yeah. For tomorrow's starting pitcher. Yep, so, probably so. Which, let's go and talk about him. Jonathan Bolin. It was reported by Jalen Thompson, Joel Goldberg. It is it is a fact. Jonathan Bolin will be making his um, season debut, not his MLB debut, his season debut, starting against the Toronto Blue Jays when the Royals travel to Rogers Center to take on the AL East foe. Um, he he's been doing good stuff for the Omaha Storm Chasers. Like this isn't a oh well he's he's kind of a guy we can afford to burn out if we need to. He he is by far the best Omaha Storm Chasers starter this year. He is one of the best in the Royals minor league system. If I recall correctly, I think his ERA sits like sixth amongst all the affiliated ball clubs. 
um, and it leads his other Storm Chasers peers by a by a wide margin. Are, are you excited to see him, Jeremy? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the stats I always look for is the strikeouts minus walks. Uh, um, he's got yeah. a better than four to one ratio there. Uh, so that that will probably play a little bit concerned about the 32.8 percent line drive percentage. Yeah, that seems a little dangerous. But um, 27 years old, making his first real MLB start. I think he had a start last year, but it was really more of an opener kind yeah. of thing than a start kind of thing. Um, he's limiting the home runs. So I and the BAPIP's not crazy. So I, I, I'm hoping he's going to look good enough for a start or two. And then Alec Marsh will come back and, and we'll be able to go back to him. And then, you know, we'll know, you know, did Bolin look good in those two starts? OK, well, the next guy gets hurt. We're ready. We know who's coming. Or, yep. you know, somebody is a little ineffective. Uh, Brady Singer, who I <laughs> keep bragging on. People don't like it. But if he has to go to the bullpen because he's he's got like, OK, he's got three starts in a row, y'all, where he didn't. His numbers aren't bad. Not giving up that many runs, but he's throwing a lot of pitches. He's yep. missing the strike zone a lot. It's hard not getting uh, as many strikeouts as he wants. Not and not getting the weak contact. Um, just kind of getting a little bit lucky. Really ridiculously high left on base percentage. So um, you know, I, I it would be nice to see Bowling come up, have a couple real good starts, and then if when Alec Marsh comes back, maybe. Brady Singer is already imploded and you're like, all right, buddy, go to the bullpen or, you know, we're ready to go. But even if even if Singer's rebounded, then you have, you know, OK, well, we do have a backup for the starting rotation that we feel comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. And I do. I, I don't want us to we're not going to speculate over what's going on with Jordan Lyles, but he is he's still a, away from the team right now. And I think that is that is kind of forcing this move. I'm pretty sure that if Marsh was still on the 15 day IL, then it would just be a spot start for Jordan Lyles. But instead, he's away. So Bolin gets the nod. Listen, this this kid's been pitching in the Royals organization since the Wilmington Blue Rocks were their low A team. <laughs> I mean, he's he's been around a while, but he is a case study in how much the ripple effect of the lost 2020 season can affect a career. He was great in 2019, looked like the best pick from that 2018 draft class. At that time, people were really high on him. He was he was a higher prospect ranking than, you know, Jackson Kowar, Brady Singer, all those guys at one point. Missed 2020, of course. And then June 2021, he had to undergo a Tommy John surgery. He didn't come back until June of, of 22. And he didn't have his first full season again until 2023. And his, his uh, control had vanished was the big problem. But it does look yeah. like it's back this year. He's, he's limiting those walks again. Exactly. And I will. I do put some more stock into walks at the AAA level. Thanks to the ABS system. Right. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, it was control was completely gone um, in double A and in triple A at points last year. It was I was surprised to see him make his debut against the Detroit Tigers in September. But like that was he was on the 40 man roster and like there were a lot of injuries to close out the year. Yeah, a lot right. of guys. <laughs> um, I mean, they even so let I, Brad Keller come back for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. For for a little bit. Speaking of Brad Keller, do you, you see the news about him? No. Did he get called up by the White Sox finally? Yep. He got called up by the White Sox. He is available in the bullpen as of right now. I'm forgetting what day he's uh, he's set to get the start. Like, he's supposed to join their rotation. It's not just a, a bullpen move. He's supposed to be in their rotation. <laughs> this is this is the team that is uh, rumored right now to be considering firing their manager. Um, I forgot his name. The former Royals bench coach, Pedro Griffol. Yeah. Uh, and, and the rumor is that if they do fire him, their first choice to replace him would be Mike Matheny. The White Sox are really all in on this former Royals stuff. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they are. It is. And they're unabashed about it. Chris Getz has, has talked about it. Or is it Geitz? Did I get it wrong again? No, it's Getz. It is Getz. OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, he's all in and he he's talked about it before. Like it's why would you admit that out loud? I, I, I don't know, because it's not like the Royals are a team that you want your team to emulate. It's not like, I you mean, know right what? This second, maybe they are. 
Well, yeah, yeah, right now they are, but that's because partially because they got rid of the guys they did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like why, you're you're in, you're not emulating the 2024 Royals. You're emulating the 2022 Royals. That is a mistake. Yep. So I am I am interested to see how how Keller does. You know he's coming back from this thoracic outlet syndrome diagnosis um, surgery last October, and like we haven't seen seen a lot of guys go into the knife for that and rebound successfully. Um, guys like Steven Strasburg, Chris Archer are just a couple of to uh, the I think of. Um, so at least he'll get an opportunity with the White Sox. I, I hope it's not too ugly, but we will. Everything with that franchise right now is pretty damn ugly. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, what? I thought there was something else I wanted to talk about with Bolin, but now now I can't remember. Are we are we going with our gut here? Will Klein's going to go back down once Bolin comes up. I, I think he's the obvious choice. You could also demote Nick Anderson still has options. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if James MacArthur does, but he's your closer. So he's not going down. No. Um, Schreiber, Will Smith uh, and and Chris Stratton. None of them have options. Can't demote Matt Sauer. Nope. So um, that that's pretty much everyone. I think that we uh, just ran through there. So yeah. I, Nick Anderson hasn't been that bad. Also, a lot of people are really upset about at, at Chris Stratton after he blew yesterday's game. But I got to tell you, he hasn't been that bad, y'all. Um, and again, he's he's not been great, but you want to have depth. And the bullpen is one of the few places they do have some depth at. Yeah. Um, he does need to limit those walks. That's absolutely something he needs to get under control. Mm -hmm. But um, he's been he's shown enough that you don't want to just cut him. Yeah. Will Smith, if they just cut him, I wouldn't mind. Chris Stratton has shown enough that I'm like, don't just cut him. Um, so and that's what you'd have to do if you wanted to replace him is you'd have to completely remove him from the roster, which you don't want to do because if everybody else gets hurt, man, you wish you still had him. Mm hmm. And I do want so one fan graphs specific number that I like is their shutdown versus meltdown mm -hmm. stat for relievers. So, like, I remember I looked up Max Castillo's last year as a reliever and he had like three shutdown, but then 14 meltdown appearances. So it is first off, the Royals are cut. Hold on. We're, we're hit pause on this. The Royals are kind of having a little rally right now. Game tie in. Um, batter is at the plate with Salvador Perez and who else is on? Is this Massey? Yeah, this is Massey that's on. He just knocked a, a single into the right field. I'm curious who Q sends up to the plate. Um, Stratton, he has seven shutdown performances, three meltdown performances in in 12 games. Overall, he is still a good reliever. Okay? His his Saturday game, though, was was brutal. It really was. And I, in the Royals recap, I kind of laid this at the feet of Matt Quattrero to not pull him when he did. Yeah. Folks were, I thought it was so funny that folks were calling into Vern's postgame show yesterday saying like, oh, well, after he walked the number nine guy, he should have pulled him. I'm like, no, it's, it's not how baseball works. You have to face your three minimum. And you keep it moving. Oh, Vinny is a pinch hitter. Hold on. We are we are live talking about this game. Come on now. No outs. Two right. on with Vinny. I'm, not, I'm, not, the I'm not opening it. You're going to have to tell me what's going on. Uh, hey, let, let's hope for the best. Foley is the is Foley the guy that they got to on a yeah, on Friday. Yesterday. But he's been very good this year. Just not against the Royals, apparently. Well, um, Vinny had a productive out. At least he grounded out to first base, but it was hard hit enough that. Uh, that moved the runners over. So one out and a deep, uh, deep ball score Salvi from third, hopefully with MJ Melendez at the plate. Um, going, going back and forth with this. I, I agree with you. We need a little bit more time on Stratton before they just at like outright cut him. Um, the, the FIP versus ERA does say that he's doing better, but he is not, He's not doing as well as expected. Okay. Like, this is a guy who was a 1.1 FR guy last year, which, as a reliever, that's a very good mark. That that really is. It doesn't sound yeah. like much, but it is valuable. 
and he got there primarily because he because he had control. He just doesn't have that so far this year. Yeah, so, um, David ahead, Lesky sorry. wrote in his his newsletter about how Stratton does a lot worse when he has too much rest. And I actually mentioned that in yesterday's game thread. I said, oh, really? well, Stratton hasn't pitched in two days. They better pitch him today or <laughs> else you're, you're running that risk. And, of course, they did pitch him and, and it maybe was still too late. Yeah. Oh, well, they they didn't pitch him on Sunday, so hopefully we see him in Toronto, probably get a couple of games in there and see what happens. I think the I think some of the what is it, the impatience or the the quick to pull the trigger approach with the bullpen is because there are some righties who are doing very good things with triple A. Well, people just want to pull triggers. (laughs) <laughs> really fast anyway. Uh, they were ready to bench Michael Garcia. And they were like, demote Michael Garcia. Well, glad we didn't do that, right? Because he's yeah. got a couple more hits today. That's true. That's true. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, MJ Melendez is out, so now we're down to the down to the final out. He's he's struck out, unfortunately. Not a surprise, oh, sadly. Yeah. It's he has just not been just hasn't been good. Has not been a good run. Dyron Blanco is still hitting, so this should be interesting. Yeah, they ran out of pinch hitters. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, did they? Yeah, I guess they would have run out of everyone. Um, Kyle Isbell is the only one who's left. You want Kyle Isbell uh, pinch hitting? No. Yeah, so. No. But yeah, I mean, you look you look at these guys like Jonah DePoto. Is, he's at least doing okay. Walter Pennington is still doing amazing stuff. Sam Lefty, Long. What'd you say? Uh, Sam Long and Pennington are both lefties. They they are, which I now I'm talking about pulling the trigger on Smith if they wanted to. Like well, those yeah. are those are both replacement options. But if if you want to go righty only, John McMillan, Stephen Cruz, Colin Selby, who they traded for, um Did McMillan figure himself out? He was having a lot of control issues. That he was. I don't know how he's been doing with the uh with the Royals organization up there in Omaha. But let's see here. Four, four and a third inning innings. Let's see here. His ERA is ugly at a 10.38. Oof. But he is striking out at a great rate. K over nine is 14.5, but he's also walking a lot at 8.3. Um, Blanco just went down swinging, and that is the ball game. So the Kansas City Royals have officially dropped the Detroit series. They are still winless in rubber matches, um, which I don't, I, I said before the show, I wanted to talk about that. I don't know what to like, what to say about it. It just, do, it doesn't give me any confidence with this team heading into a rubber match because once or twice is a coincidence, but what I think they're Owen six right now in those, in those such games. And you don't want to see that from a winning team overall, that they have to get the series win in the first two games or it doesn't happen at all. I guess where I come from is that every series in which they've lost a game has had a rubber match in it. They still haven't been swept yet. Yes, you're right. They've won their fair share of series by just winning the first two or three games of the series. So they're they're what seventeen and twelve now still yep, 17 and 12. still pretty good, yeah. Um, I think that's still like a ninety five win pace. I Probably so. I I can't I I can't get worked up over a kind of silly little stat like that that it just it doesn't doesn't tell you. It, it's kind of like oh this guy does great in day games on Tuesdays. <laughs> um, fair, fair. All right, man, why don't we go ahead and get to our Spotify Q&As, and then we'll get on out of here with a review, huh? Sure, that sounds like a good idea. All righty. So um, last last go-around, we talked about some of the rotational pieces that we were worried about keeping their pace. Brady Singer was one that, that you hammered home, Jeremy, um, that comes to mind. And so I asked the listeners, what starter are you most worried about maintaining their current pace? Um, we got several different choices here. Aaron Bailey says Lugo. I traded him in my FB league when the stock was high, and I'm regretting that now, but we will see. 
Um, Aiden Dallas says Reagan's no man can have all that stuff plus with no injuries. And that that is a good point. He's got to be putting got to be putting some torque on the old on the old left arm. What do you you don't disagree or you don't agree, Jeremy? I mean, he's had injuries, so I, he could get hurt. I, I just don't buy the well, he's got stuff plus, therefore he must get hurt. <laughs> Now, if you were like, well, he has a big, he has a pretty lengthy injury, a history of injuries, then I'd say, okay, yeah, that is that he does have injury concern, but I I don't buy into the, well, he's got stuff plus, therefore he must be hurt. Okay. Luke 57 says, Singer really doesn't want to change his stripes, but Marsh is the scary one. I'm hoping he'll keep getting better. Then Royal Rupert came back saying, Brady Singer, he seems that he will not depart from being a sinker slider pitcher. And yeah, that is, he he looked better when he had a three-pitch mix at least, but he just goes back to his old habits. Matt Kirsch says, agree with Jeremy on this one. Singer has me worried. And then lastly, Ginger620 says, Reagan's, but only due to injury concerns. Two Tommy Johns and 100 mile per hour fastballs does not a healthy pitcher make. And I think that's that's more what you're thinking, Jeremy, right? Yeah, minus the 100 mile per hour fastballs. Do you know how many guys throw 100 miles per hour now? A lot of guys throw 100 it, miles per hour now. Yeah, it's not as uh, it's not as uncommon as as one may when think. I, when I was a kid, nobody threw 100 miles per hour. <laughs> now everybody throws 100 miles per hour. It's Every crazy. team has at least one guy who can at, do at that. At least. Oh, man. But we'll, uh, yeah, Royals sitting at I 17 mean, and 12. It's hard to be mad. I, I'm, I'm still, I mean, even 10 years ago, somebody might throw 100 miles an hour. There were a handful of guys who could throw 100 miles an hour, but they were relievers only. No starter threw that hard. Oh, yeah. Now we have several starters doing that. Cole right. Reagan being one of and them. And the relievers can throw 103, 104. <laughs> We've got Paul Skeens hasn't even made it to the big leagues yet. Mason Miller, I am looking at you in the Oakland Athletics bullpen doing amazing things for them. All right, Jeremy, why don't we go ahead and uh, and get our reviews out of the way, huh? Yeah. What What do you got for a review today? All right. Um, <laughs> he's, I wanted to give this one a little folks. bit more time, but I don't. I don't have anything else I can think of right now. So I'm going to review the app Nerva. Um, okay. N e r v a. So I suffer from IBS, um, as do many people. And I have tried a million different things from medications to heating pads to uh, diet changes to try and deal with it. And everything I've tried works for a little bit and then quits on me. Um, But I started uh, Nerva a couple of weeks ago, and it's it's basically a hypnotherapy uh, program where you just listen to a 15 to 20 minute uh, pre-recorded hypnotherapy session every day and with the idea being that there's a strong connection between your mind and gut so like when you're feeling stressed out or nervous you feel butterflies in your stomach that's your mind controlling your gut so this is like hey let's try this and i'm i'm not a a guy you you give me hypnotism and i'm like i don't know about this but it was a week free trial uh, money back guarantee and i'm desperate so i decided to try it and (laughs) i have felt so much better for the last two weeks, which is even more encouraging because you're not even supposed to see the real results until you've been doing it for at least a month. Um, I, I Even the good days have been better for me and the bad days have not been as bad and not as frequent. So I'm, I'm super excited about where this is going to take me. I was very down and depressed and like, what is the point of living? Um, and now I'm starting to see like there's a there's a light maybe at the end of this tunnel. So. Um, hopefully it keeps working and hopefully if somebody else out there suffers from IBS the way I do, uh, it gives you an idea of something to try. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. My, my review this week is, is going to be short and simple. And for, for those folks out there who don't like the fact that we, that we cite so many numbers, first off, that, that's just what baseball is right now. I want, I want y'all to, to make that clear. This is, we, on this podcast, we don't talk about, oh, well, you know, he it looks like he's putting some good swings on the ball and things like that. And then the metrics say the complete opposite, i.e. Hunter Renfro. But a lot of those numbers come from places where you pay money or they're funded by MLB itself, 
One such place is Fangraphs, who is it is a publicly available site. You should absolutely support them if you can. But there's there's a lot of great tools on here that that I use nearly daily. Um, Roster Resource is one of their great acquisitions. Just looking at the depth across, like up and down the entire roster, you have all the MILB stats here, which surprisingly, you know, MLB.com stat sheet isn't great but it's at least usable. It's not the case for MILB, and I get it. There's four times as many teams out there, but Fangraphs makes it really easy. Um, good written stuff from, from the team over there. I don't, I don't feel like their team is as big as it once was, um, but that is, that's just where they're at right now, and that is okay, if you ask me. So if you want to try out a new, a new baseball site, Maybe learn about the numbers. They have a glossary that will teach you about what each statistic is and where it comes from. That is the first stop you need to make is at Fangraphs.com. I got a bookmark. It's, a, it's in my bookmark bar. <laughs> yep. I'm there all the time. I have used their resources to learn about stats on a regular basis. That's how I figured out uh, I, once upon a time, not not just this last week, I knew this heading into writing this last week that le- um, <laughs> left on base percentage usually hovers in the low to mid 70s. Um, and so when I see guys like Lugo and Singer with LOBs of upper 80s, I know mm, there's probably a little bit of luck happening there. Probably so. So that is that is just one example of what you can get from Fangraphs.com. Jeremy, any closing thoughts before we get on out of here? Um, let's, let's go take a series, another series from the, from the Blue Jays. Yes. Let's, uh, I, I really hope the boys in blue head up to the great North and, and get the job done against the Blue Jays who are glad, j- glad we don't have to set 10 guys to the inactive list this time. <sighs> what a world. I'll what, never what, be what, able to see the team go to Toronto without thinking about that ever again. Even though two of those guys are still on the roster. Yeah, that's true. Is it at least is it two? Bad? There might like, be more. I can not remember. I know two of them are. Is it bad that that's what I thought about with uh, Bolin? It's like, well, is is he the only guy that that can go to replace <laughs> Marsh? <laughs> uh, well, I remember last year, um, Logan Porter didn't get called up as early as he might have. Tyler Cropley got called up because he had his passport. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like this should be a part of the preseason checklist. Okay, he. You, you send out a list after every season. You say, hey, you better come to these Arizona. Are young, these are young men who they are. They're, they're not asked to go out of the country except for once a year if they're on the major league roster. So I understand. And they don't make a ton of money even still in, in the minor leagues. Though they yeah. make more than they used to. So that's at least good. But passports are expensive. They are. They, they really are. You would, I and, would hope. and keeping it with you. And making sure you don't lose it, because I think they were. I think the reason, because it takes a while to get one too. So I think the it reason does. Logan Porter didn't. He just he had a passport. He just didn't have it with him. <sighs> Imagine if he hadn't made his MLB debut later, and like that was his one window to play <laughs> a Major League Baseball game. I think. Yeah. I think that would be a terrible scenario. But all in all, listen, you can uh, you can go check out RoyalsReview.com for everything you need to know ahead of the Toronto series. Game recaps, game threads, go check that out. If you prefer to ingest your game recaps in an audio format, we have you covered here with the Royals recaps. Um, I host those. We have some callers come in every now and then. We try to throw <laughs> things off the rails. What, one but, caller. What, well, yeah, it's one caller so far. Um, Fistifer put a bad like look or a bad image into my head um, with, how, with how the trucker put Bobby. He said Bobby Wheat. Instead of Bobby <laughs> Witt. <And> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't, it, I, don't even, I don't even know, man. I don't I, even know. I don't either. But we're, we're going to keep it moving, do great things here. Thank you, everyone out there, for joining us. Once again, my name is Jake Milham. He is Jeremy Greco. And until next time, go Royals. <laughs>